from the Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Dylan Scott. You know, we're living in a woke world. You already knew that, though, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dale did not have his microphone anywhere near his mouth. Oh, Singer Pat Benatar announces that she will never, ever, ever sing again her classic hit, Hit Me With Your Best Shot, because of American gun violence problems. Oh. Even though the song has nothing to do with guns. Oh. Isn't that crazy? I mean, wh- where do you get in your uh, in your mind that this is somehow how you're going to help the cause by never singing the friggin' song again, which everyone loves. It's stupid. And you know what? No one other than her has thought of this. No. So you're you're you you put this on your No one was self. asking. No, no one no was asking, asking for this. this. Although she does still have a song called Hell is for Children, which I really don't understand. <laughs> It, it literally the lyrics are because hell hell is for children and you know that their little lives can become such a mess hell hell is for children and she sing, still sings that song yeah i mean isn't that ridiculous it's just stupid it's i don't just... get it. i love her um i absolutely love her i don't know if you've seen her lately but she has the most amazing voice and she and her husband are on tour all the time and she really puts on a good show i saw her in dc uh, maybe 10 years ago yeah yeah, they're going to be here in Vegas sometime soon. She will not be singing Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Well, then there's no need to go. I, I'm not going. <laughs> in other music news, the Chainsmokers will be the first act to perform in space. No one's ever done this before. Wow. Drew and Alex are officially set to perform on the edge of space from a pressurized capsule tethered to a stratospheric balloon 20 miles above the Earth. Why? My question is... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? Because you can. The duo will take flight with space tourism company Worldview, and the company said that the duo will be on one of their inaugural flights in 2024. Uh, Chainsmoker said, we've always dreamed of going into space. Well, who hasn't, right? Everybody wants to go into space. No. You don't? No. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you no. don't want to perform. What, what about Swish Edition in space? God, no, you'd be by yourself. <laughs> this my friends is the swish edition from their secret underground studio this is the swish edition we got a mouthful for you guys dale and scott are in the studio on the mics and, and, and they fired up the antenna it has to come whether you like it or not and if you're willing to show it they'll take a picture of it i actually think i might throw <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between, here are your new best friends. They're your hosts. It's very exciting for me because this is the best show ever made. Dale and Scott. Sometimes you think it's never going to end. I wonder how many people turn off the podcast thinking that theme song is never I know, going to end. We should get um, those people that did the binge bomb on the sing. It's the Swish Edition podcast. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, this is, I want to let you know right here at the top of the show, but in case you didn't already know, this is the last episode before our Aug- August Hiatus. Say that really fast. August Ooh. hiatus. Uh, Dale and I were taking a five week break. We'll be back with the second half of season twelve on Tuesday, September sixth. I can't believe that next week is August. For one thing, yeah, that ra- just I, I I can't believe it. But I'm very much looking forward to September. Let me tell you guys. Okay, so the secrets out of the bag. We tape this show the night before you guys hear it. So we're taping it on Monday night. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the desert, in the middle, of, or late July. It is 70 
three degrees outside and raining. Yeah, it's freaking weird. That does not happen. <laughs> that does not happen here. It is so weird. We've been outside for the last couple of hours. We just came inside to do the show. I mean, at this, it should be 110 degrees it, outside. It's usually that temperature. And it would be very, very dry. Yeah. We don't get clouds and rain i saw lightning a couple times today yeah. and the weird yeah. thing is for the last couple of weeks we've we've gotten one or two of these wet days where yeah. there's been overcast and lightning we're going to be dry overnight but we're going to get more thunderstorms tomorrow so In or today time. as you guys are hearing this we might be out there enjoying the lower temperatures <laughs> well, why wouldn't you right Anyway, so uh, again, we're, we're off for five weeks. Uh, we got some important stuff going on in August, and we're taking a break. But we will be back and looking forward to rejoining you in the fall. There you go. Summer travel's a mess. You guys know that. You've been reading about it constantly. The airlines are a mess. Right? I wouldn't want to go to Europe right now. No, I, I don't even. I don't even want to go anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere. It is. We got it all here in Vegas. Why would we go anywhere? It's a freaking nightmare because you don't know if you go to the airport if you're going to get where you're going, where you need to go, or if your shit's going to get there. Right. Luggage is getting lost left and right, up and down, all over the world. I heard that like Heathrow is just having a shitty time with baggage. I I, I don't know. Why is everything breaking down? Why is the entire world breaking down? I don't understand. Nobody knows how to do anything anymore. It's just fucking weird. Do your fucking job, people. (laughs) We do our job. We know we still know how to do a podcast. Right. Anyway, this family went to Europe this summer, uh, Germany to be exact. And when they got home, they realized their bags were not with them. They checked four bags, this family. Uh Uh, They put Apple AirTags in their luggage. Mm -hmm. They were able to show the airline here in the United States that their bags were in Dusseldorf, Germany. I can see them. Mm -hmm. There they are. (laughs) Could Could you bring them to me, please? Airline said, we can't find them. And I'm like, I'm looking at them. They're at the airport. Right. I'm telling you, they're at the airport. And they're like, well, there's nothing we can do. We can't find them. That's bullshit. So he booked himself an airplane flight and went back to Germany. The airline let him go into the lost luggage locker or place or room or whatever. And he found his fucking luggage. Who needs their luggage so badly that you're going to book a flight all the way back to Europe to get your (laughs) luggage? What is in that luggage that you need so bad? Yeah, because I can't think. I'm thinking that what what I pack, I could easily replace. Not need to see again. This is why. If you've got something that valuable, put it in your carry on. Well, I mean, if you got medicine or artifacts or I don't know, what else could they possibly have that they needed to get back so badly? I don't understand your first bubble here. Yeah. He said he had Apple Air tags in the four bags, which yes. he claimed contained valuable family treasures they bought on their vacation. Yeah, well, there are two different things here, but yeah, he claimed that the bags that were in Dusseldorf yeah. had valuable family treasures that they bought on their vacation, and that's why he wanted the bags back. How did how does something you buy on vacation immediately become a family treasure? I don't know. That's what they, they said. That it would, <laughs> just it said it would ruin their Is it t- memories of the holidays if they couldn't have this shit that they bought on vacation. It's probably just fucking t-shirts and keychains. I don't buy anything on vacation. Knick I don't buy anything on Shot vacation. Glasses. And if I did buy something <laughs> significant on vacation, like I bought our uh, piece of, pieces of art that you and I have purchased around the world, mm-hmm. We have them shipped home. Let someone else deal with it. We don't put it in our luggage. We couldn't anyway. We couldn't anyway. It's too big. Anyway, I'm just saying how stupid this story is. And I, I can't imagine this. why this guy thought it was important to book himself a flight and go find his luggage on his own. Well, he Obviously, I, doesn't have enough to do. I am a fan of Apple AirTags. They work. You have one on your wallet. Yep. And we have one on our... Um, our keys to the bike rack. We should put them on the dogs. Yeah. I've seen yeah. People do that. I guess you could do that. Anyway. Well, who wants to help find them? They run away. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, find the No, we don't want to find it. If the dogs go missing, oh, well. Oh, well. Hey, We're there's kidding. a big Super Bowl sponsorship sh- sh- shake up. Can I speak? Sponsorship? Let me just start that again. There's a big Super Bowl sponsor shakeup this year. 
For the first time in decades, Pepsi will no longer sponsor the halftime show. I've never not watched the Super Bowl and it not been Pepsi. Pizza Hut will no longer be the official sponsor. They're passing the slice to Little Caesars. Anheuser-Busch is ending their 33-year monopoly on alcohol ads. They paid. They literally paid, up paid, to be the the only only one. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, they have some of the most iconic. Oh, yeah. The Clydesdale. Super Bowl commercials. Absolutely. Yeah. They're putting their money in other places. And and Hunter Bush, the the Budweiser commercials are commercials that you look forward to seeing. But I don't think you need to overpay to be the only one. Well, right. No. So Anheuser-Busch says we're still going to have ads on the Super Bowl. We're just not paying that premium price to be the only one. So we're also going to see cores and you're going to see. Right. Uh, I mean, the thing about this is I don't give two shits about this. What I care about is yeah. I want these companies to stop posting their fucking commercials on YouTube prior to the Super Bowl. They ruin it. They ruin it. They ruin it. For the past several years, they've been doing that. And I get it, because they're paying shit tons of money. They want everyone to see it. And they want everyone to see it. There's no surprise anymore. do it after. Don't do it before. They haven't announced yet who's going to be the Super Bowl halftime show. Now, of course, 2023, is it's still, what, six weeks, six months away. Um, I don't even know where it is, but I know that we have it here in Vegas in 24. So we've got a year and a half before yeah. it's here in Vegas. Would you go? If if we could do it right, would you go? I would go if I had decent seats. Yeah. And I, I don't. And I, if I was performing in the halftime show, I'd go too. Geez. Sure. I'd dance. Well, I, I, think, I think this is something that we need to work on and probably work on early. Yeah. Because you know where I'm going with this, with, yeah. with what we spend and we talk to people and we right. could get ourselves in. But that's going to be a hot fucking commodity. Oh, it's going to be a hot commodity here in Vegas. Everyone's going to want to go. Exactly. I'll go. I'll go. But it's got to be right. <laughs> yeah. Um, a new study says in-game exposure during the Super Bowl in February translates to about $170 million in equivalent media value. So if you spend a million dollars for a 30-second ad, you're getting about $170 million in revenue. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So, I mean, if we could scrape a million dollars together for <laughs> Swish Edition, <laughs> uh, then we'd get $170 million in t-shirt sales, Swish Edition t-shirts. What, what do we, what, how else would we make money? Actually, you know what would be cool is by 2024, hopefully, that part of our yard will be done. He's pointing at the backyard because you guys can't see and us. May, and maybe we just do it right and have get the blow up screen i would do a big huge super bowl oh, party is that what you're saying it's february so we need to be inside oh it might be nice yeah it could be 75 <laughs> anyway why are we talking about the super bowl in july i don't know in related news toys r us is making a comeback yet again this is the store this is the brand that was huge for decades and then all of a sudden it took a nosedive and and went into bankruptcy and they couldn't even keep their new york flagship store open yeah i mean this this was something that growing up as a kid you wanted to go to it's huge and the thing was now was everyone was buys fucking expensive so it was a treat yeah but everyone to buys their toys now on amazon so right. i mean people don't buy toys in toy stores anyway uh toys r us is opening a pop-up store in all of macy's stores nationwide starting this month uh rolling uh through october they'll all be open in time for the holidays these are going to be pop-up stores in big from 1,000 square feet to up to 10,000 square feet in some of the bigger cities like New York, San Francisco, L.A. Yeah, All the stores are going to have demonstration tables so kids can play with the toys. And they're going to have life-size Jeffries so you can get your picture with Jeffrey the giraffe. Do you remember giraffe. going to the mall and you pass those toy stores that have like that – it's this table that's a circle and it has like a ring around it and there's those – stupid barking dogs that just arr, 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 yeah arr, arr, of course arr. oh of course they were, they were outside of every fucking toy spencer's story. it was in front of spencer's and all day long you just say arr, 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 the stupid fucking toys yeah and is your, spencer and your still point, around i don't know if spencer's is still around i've never been in a mall in forever spencer's was that store that as someone not of age 
you could go to <laughs> and see dirty things. <laughs> Basically, it was like an adult yeah. store that gets they had to like go edible into. underwear and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> hey, the CDC has finally canceled their cruise ship guidance, which it should have happened a long time ago. They're no longer tracking COVID on ships, and they're not telling the cruise companies anymore what they need to do. Most of the cruise lines are still requiring vaccines and testing as of press time, but Virgin, which we are booked on for later this year, immediately announced that they're ending the testing. So we do not need to provide them a negative test before Hooray. we get on. They're also allowing 10% of their passengers to be unvaccinated. I don't know if I like that idea, but... I'm, I'm not concerned. Do you do you have your... I, so I assume we need to go with, to prove that, right? Yeah, I got my vaccine card right here in my desk. But you have yet to put it in your phone. Um, not officially, but yeah. You and you should have do you that. done that? I have. Oh, I haven't. And done that's that just yet. the most convenient way. And I can show you how to do it, but it's it's like perfect. So I'm not planning to bring my physical card. Mm-hmm. That scares me. But I'm use my phone. Okay. Well, yeah, we're doing that in October. So excited <sighs> about that. I guess I should bring it right. I think so, just in case. But don't check it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking check it. Oh, my God. That was so funny. Uh, There's a hollow promise out there. A Missouri man sues uh, Bass Pro Shops because they stopped replacing his lifetime guarantee socks that he's had for like 20 years. He's been going. He's been wearing these socks that he bought at Bass Pro Shops. And about every couple of years, he takes them in and said, hey, they're all worn out. Give me a new pair. And they've always given them to him until most recently when they said, uh, yeah, you need to stop this. This is ridiculous. And he's like, dude, these are lifetime guarantee socks. They're supposed to last for a lifetime or you replace them. Isn't lifetime guarantee mean lifetime, lifetime. guarantee? Right. So he's suing them. And you know what? I'm all. I agree with this one. I agree with this one. I'm usually against these frivolous ridiculous lawsuits that as pop long, up all the time as long as it's not for like a fucking million dollars no. it should be ten dollars the cost of the socks plus court cost the company is still advertising that the socks are lifetime guarantee to this day yeah so how could they not stand behind their friggin' socks and you know what no one fucking does it they throw them out so you have just one guy it's a handful of guys so just give them just a fucking them pair the fucking of socks. socks i mean it that would solve the problem yeah and then take the fucking socks off your floor and stop selling them but listen companies out there that can listen and hear me stop offering lifetime guarantees if you're not going to stand behind them right right so i agree i don't believe that this is frivolous i think this is yeah Companies need need to stand behind yeah. what they're offering. I think absolutely. Speaking of lawsuits, Amazon has sued Facebook for increasing numbers of fake reviews of products. Now, listen, I'm all for this too. <laughs> all for this too. Amazon and Facebook. It's kind of like Kong versus Godzilla, right? Yeah. Two of the biggest companies in the country fighting it out. Amazon's right on this one. If you've got increasing number of fake reviews on products because of face, Facebook bots and fake users, right? then yeah, I think you should go after them with all you have. Listen, I'm thinking that all the bad reviews that I have for my books that are on Amazon, I think they're coming from fake bots on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> How could anyone think that um, one of my books is not good? I just, I almost feel like this shit just needs to go away. I did a deep, away. listen, listen, let me t- tell you about this. Cause you know, one of my favorite people on earth besides Dale blades is Ricky Martin, who is staring at me from a picture above my desk. Uh, Ricky Martin has been through some shit lately. Yeah. Um, he was recently cleared of stalking claims down in Puerto Rico. Cause his friggin' nephew well, lost cleared, his mind. Well, but the nephew it was dropped through the, the claim, the claim. Yeah. Anyway, there were, there were tons and tons of commenters. On the Ricky Martin post uh, that he posted about the claim being dropped, saying that Ricky paid the nephew $800,000. It was over and over and over again. And I'm like, this, where are you getting this information from? This has not been reported. There is no legitimate news source out there reporting this information. Right. How could you perpetuate this false information 
it, when it, when it, you have no idea what you're talking about. And I, so I look at these people and I do a deep dive into these people that are commenting. They're fake people. Yeah. They don't have one friend on Facebook. Right. These are fake accounts. And I don't know what the bottom line is. I don't know why, to what end are they posting this stuff or why would it even occur? What do they get out of it? I don't know. You think there'd be a way that Facebook could reach out to Facebook users to be able to just kind of like verify but that, listen, you're, that you're real. If it, you don't you have to do great. something to keep your account active. Yeah, maybe you just scan your driver's license and <laughs> prove that you're a real person. Why not? Right. Why not? I think that's a that, that would be a good thing. Then we'd know that the people we're interacting with on social media are actual real people. I've actually often thought of that. Is oh, is there any harm or any problem to the requirement of not being anonymous online? Yes, I think I think it's important. I think as I think social it, media is getting it would more and more cool dangerous, down the this bullshit. Yeah. Uh, social media is fucking dangerous yeah look at how much time I, I i said this to you yesterday i said dale look at my there's an app on the iphone that shows you how much time you've spent on your phone <laughs> and what you spent it on yeah and i spent like four hours on just like fucking reels which is the tiktok version yeah on facebook and instagram i mean that's sick and wrong and I could have read a whole fucking book in the time that I was looking at these stupid videos. Yeah, but when you watch those videos, you learn things. I know. Remember what I, I taught you today? What did you teach me today? <laughs> the slang term for queef. Oh, um, oh, shit. The slang term. The new term for queef <laughs> is a vaginal fart. No, what was it? The vaginal fart is technically what it is. <laughs> A cooter cough. <laughs> a cooter cough. I knew it was something like that. Or coochie cough, I guess you could do that. Coochie <laughs> cough. I like that. <laughs> hey, if nobody was there, oh, God. if nobody was there, how do we know for sure that something actually happened? Oh, God. I'm reading an article today that, uh, or recently, that said that a Colorado Springs man successfully pushed a peanut all the way up to the summit of Pikes Peak with his nose. All right, so one, this is a the one of the dumbest things that I think a human could do. Why, why would you fucking do such a thing? And not only did he do it, he's also like the fourth or fifth person to do it. Bob Salem, he's 53 years old, reached the top of Pikes Peak Friday morning. That's last Friday. He broke the previous verified record of the feat, completing the task in seven days. The previous record was eight days. Dude, dude spent an entire week pushing a peanut up a mountain with his nose. But here's the point I'm trying to make. He was all by himself. It didn't happen. Nobody was with him. No one's there. It didn't happen. How, I mean, I how don't can care. The, how can the journalist who wrote this story write the story and say that the man did it when there's no proof that the man did it? Right. I could call a, the AP right now, Associated Press, <laughs> and say, I, say did it in I, six days. I did something, God knows what, some Ow. amazing feat. <laughs> you pushed a peanut up Mount Charleston. I, or, I, or maybe I, <laughs> I pushed a marble down Las Vegas Boulevard with my dick. Oh, God. I did it. Nobody was there to see it, but I swear to God I did it. Well... That's what I'm saying. I'm calling bullshit on this. <laughs> Maybe Bob Salem did it. I'm not saying he didn't because I wasn't there. I can't say he didn't. Do I'm it. saying he didn't do it. But what I'm saying is the guy didn't do it if no one saw it happen. Yeah, exactly. Right. End of story. End of story. We've talked before on the show about salt and straw. They're crazy, crazy ice cream flavors. Have you heard, you heard about this, right? Yeah, you were about telling me the about this before. the other day. Yeah. Uh, they have two new summer flavors. Tell me if you guys can get behind this. One of them is deviled egg custard with smoked black tea. And the other one is salty donut, which has ham and jam in it. Do you want ham in your fucking ice cream? No, I don't. Do you want deviled eggs in your ice cream? No, I don't even want them 
<laughs> by themselves. <laughs> want them at all. Fasten those seatbelts, fuckers. This is going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy ride. It already is. The Kennedy Center honors were announced uh, a couple days ago. For 2022, it's a weird lineup, man. I think it might be the weirdest lineup I've ever seen. Yeah. George Clooney, you 2 Gladys Knight, some chick named Tania Leone, who is a Cuban-born classical music composer. And here's the weird one. <laughs> is it weird? Amy Grant. Yeah. Baby, baby. She's got one song. No, she has two. <laughs> What's the other one? Um, so you don't even know it. I have to look it up. I realize that she's big in the Christian community, and then she turned over to pop, but then she did the nothing. The lucky one. Baby, I'm, I'm a lucky one. one. Dun, 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 dun. Amy Grant? But how do you not know that? We were just like jamming out to those songs okay. the other day. Okay, I like Amy Grant. I like her a lot. She's married to Vince Gill, right? Aren't they still married? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Love her to death. I don't, I don't. However, she's not Kennedy Center honor worthy. She had a couple songs. <laughs> a couple songs. Maybe the Kennedy Center is just just they're <laughs> grasping for shit. <laughs> you too. I mean, they're iconic and huge. I feel like it's been done, but <laughs> right, but they're not even Americans. Isn't this an American thing? I thought it was an American thing. You too is not American. They're no. or, aren't they Scottish or British or something? Something. And then George Clooney, obviously, he's pretty iconic at the point. We, it's funny though. You and I have been watching the first season of Roseanne lately because when we watch, yeah, when we eat dinner, we tend to turn on an old sitcom. We find an old sitcom to watch. We've been watching the first season of Roseanne, and George Clooney's on there. He plays Booker, obviously, who's the guy who runs the plastic factory. And this is way before he was anything. I mean, that yeah. was his first gig. He looked great. But he's obviously done he some amazing stuff very since Very young in this. I guess he deserves the honor. Gladys Knight. And what about the Pips? Do the Pips get, get to go to? <laughs> it's, I have a dead. Gladys Knight story. Remember? When we first came to Vegas, we were looking for houses to buy. And oh, Gladys's night, yeah. Gladys Knight's house was for sale. It was. It was and I saw it online. Shit. And I no, I wanted to buy it so bad. It was ugly. It was different. <laughs> And it sold right before it we got ugly. Right before the ch we got a chance to see it, it sold. Anyway, I don't know Tanea Leon, but she's a classical music composer. Anyway, yeah. Kennedy Center honors it. it, it usually like, tape sometime in the fall, and then they show it in yeah, December. Sometimes it can be fun depending on who's being honored. For like sure. There, recently, there was I I think it was a John Stewart one. That was kind of fun because it was, you know, he's a comic, so all of his comic friends out there making fun of him. They can be fun. They did Reba. They've done yeah. Cher. They've done all the iconic. They can people. be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, Why walk didn't we ever go when we lived there? Is it open to the public? Um, I know. I think you have to be a big donor. Yeah. To be able to go to that. That's probably the their number one event of the year. Probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, Trump never went. But I think everyone, every other president has gone. <laughs> yeah, no one, because he knew it, what would happen. Because that is a yeah. very, very liberal event. It, it's super, a very super liberal, liberal venue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Walking Dead made a huge, huge announcement at Comic Con. Comic Con was this past weekend. And uh, if you guys aren't into Comic Con, maybe you don't care about this. Or, uh, But if you like Walking Dead, this is huge news. It was huge news because we did not see it coming. Um, they have announced a six-episode series that is going to explore Rick and Michonne. We're going to finally figure out where Rick has been all these years. It's been a couple years now a long since he disappeared. Time. It's been more than a couple. And then Michonne left about a year and a half ago to go try to find Rick. Right. Because she believes he might still be alive. Everyone else thinks he's dead. But she <laughs> took off. Left her kids. Fuck those kids. I'm going to find my husband. And off she went. So now we're going to find out what happened. Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerreras. Is that I, you say her name? I cannot know her last name. Um, They're going to star six episode series. It's coming out sometime next year. The Rick movies that we've been talking about here on the show for years, they've been scrapped. Not happening. We're not getting those feature movies. It, this is going to, they're going to wrap it up with these six episodes. So excited about that. Also coming out of Comic-Con, we learned that Sarah Michelle Geller is coming back to the paranormal TV world. Of course, she was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the best ever girl that kicks ass. <laughs> right? If you say so. 
That's one of my favorite shows of all time. You say so. I'm sure I have a Buffy something around here. <laughs> Uh, she's going to star in a new show called Wolf Pack. It's a Teen Wolf offshoot series, and they're making it for Paramount Plus. She's going to play an arson investigator, and of course, she has to deal with werewolves. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be interesting. You know, Teen Wolf was fun for a while, and that that, that was that classic CW days. And they're not. It it just doesn't exist anymore. Teen Wolf started on uh, MTV. Oh, yeah, yeah you're it's right. A TV show. I thought it was a CW show, but you're right. It was an MTV, MTV show. show. Yeah. But CW has just gone the shit, too. Uh, they've, yeah. It used to be this this like teen dream, right? It was all hot girls and hot boys and this stupid fucking drama bullshit. Yeah, and it's just ruined it. It's just never now worked. It's all, now it's all superheroes. It's all stupid shit. It's all really bad CGI superhero shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's not It's not fun anymore. They CW, canceled, CW they, was fun. Ever since they canceled Dynasty, I'm done with the CW. Believe yeah. me. I love my Dynasty. They, they've ruined themselves. I agree. Hey, For All Mankind on Apple TV Plus has gotten an order for season four. We're very excited about that. Dale and I are still... Watching season one. We're slowly <laughs> getting there. We only watch like one a week, so it takes us a long time yeah, to get there. But I it. did hear that this uh, season four is going to be in the 2000s. I like it. Yeah. So, we're, so we're getting... We need to get caught up, Dale. We can't really... We do, because I actually really, really love the we, show, but I do agree with you that there's just parts of the show that are just, why the fuck are we watching? It's slow. It's, it's slow. It is slow. It's it's a slow burn. I, I think wish it was it. like 45 minutes. Yeah. Because there could be 15 minutes of just bullshit that we just don't need to see. They need a better editor. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is the hugest news. So this came out uh, yesterday morning. Weekends with Adele. The residency at Caesars Palace is finally back on. We've talked about this a lot on the show before. And I'm basically taking a, uh-huh, we'll, <laughs> we'll see kind of attitude. <laughs> Uh, finally, she posted yesterday morning that she was is still horribly embarrassed by the fact that she canceled her residency last spring, and uh, she feels really bad about it. They're finally starting up again this November. It's going to run through November through March of next year. And uh, but fans are not amused. You should have seen the comments. Yeah, you should have seen the comments. And I don't understand Caesars because the way that she handled the last one, I'd say fuck you. I would say fuck you. I mean, because she literally she, canceled the concert the day before it was supposed to start. I mean, she had to put Caesars in a big financial thing. And yes, we talked about they possibly, you know, they have insurance, insurance. and they handle these things. Yeah. But just the the fallout alone that Caesars also name is on this, and that yeah. you potentially could hurt the brand with this. I was like, fuck you, just go somewhere else. Thousands of Adele fans had booked trips to Vegas, coming as far away as like Europe and, yeah. and Australia to see these concerts. And she canceled the night before it was supposed to start. It was basically because of her boyfriend. And I like Adele's music some. Sure. But I'd this go is see it. This no, is bullshit. I'm not going to if see I it. If I were now. Caesars, I would say fuck you. I go mean, somewhere else. I would be sitting there with, you know, worried that she's going to fucking pull another. She's apparently a huge well, fucking diva. And well, if I were very Caesars, unreliable. That because I know that she could bring in money, but maybe if I were Caesars I would change the terms. So you're not getting a fucking dime. You're not getting until a, the end of this residency. We will pay you. We will give after you a each, check after each, after each show. show. When you come off the stage after the show is done, we will pay you for that show. There you go. That's how I would do it. Big huge news here in Vegas. If you guys don't live in Vegas or come to Vegas very often, you probably don't care about this. But this is important to us. Station Casinos, which owns a, a bunch of the local casinos, the ones that are not on the strip, has purchased 126 acres a half a mile from our house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking wait. <laughs> they paid $172 million for that 126 acres, which we can see from our house. Yeah. So we're going to get a major, major, huge casino. Is it Green Valley Stations? Right in our backyard. It's Green Valley Stations? Green Valley is yeah. a station, I, and Red Rock uh, up there in Summerlin is... Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of them. We the, like them. It's, the, it's probably the largest non-strip 
yeah company for sure for Las Vegas, and I actually enjoy the brand. We the, do enjoy yeah, the brand. They have the great Green Valley is fucking beautiful. Yeah, they have great restaurants. Red Rock is just too far, but it's yeah. a great place too. Great pools. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Anyway, right off Cactus, uh, Cactus and Fifteen. So it'll probably be called. I, how much you want to bet? Right now, it'll be called Cactus Station. I like that name. Yeah, I like, I like it, it a lot too because we we live uh, <laughs> right next to the South Point. We do live uh, very close. I mean, to. if there was ever anything to get my mom to come here for a month or two to get out of the fucking East Coast winter and yeah. say, Mom, <laughs> if you just go down this street and just make a laugh, there's a fucking casino. There you go. All right. So uh, this past Sunday was National Parents Day. Hooray. I, I don't remember the fact that this was even a thing, but apparently President Bill Clinton back in 1994 signed this into law. It's actual. It's an actual holiday. It's always the fourth Sunday in July, National Parents Day. My question is, why do we have National Parents Day when we also have Mother's Day and Father's Day? I mean, how many fucking gifts do I need to buy for these people? Yeah, I'm not celebrating Parents Day. No, I mean, I'm not. I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't even know it was a thing. I think so I did. Sp- I think I did talk to my parents that day, but I did not mention that no one, it no was one Parents knows Day. Anyway. No one knows this. No. I mean, some people did. I had a couple <laughs> friends that posted about it. Our friend Ebony posted about it. Stupid. I saw a couple other people. Stupid. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. I don't know why Congress gets involved in stupid stuff like that. But it was a congressional resolution, and the president signed it. We we need... What, what was going on then to make them want to do this? I, I don't this know. This usually results Was there the... a problem with parenthood that we need to do? <laughs> I make know. Make sure that parents... We're appreciated, we're appreciated in 1994. Yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, that's our show. We did 36 minutes, Dale. Are you happy? It wasn't 45. Hooray. Uh, we're going to be gone, like I said, for the next five weeks. We'll be back in September. The first Tuesday in September, the day after Labor Day. At least Scott will. <laughs> where are you going to be? I make no guarantees. I don't know where I'm going to be in five weeks. How do we know where we're going to be in five weeks? Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs>